Welcome and brace yourselves. As you can see, I give up my past life as a video gamer and decided to follow my true calling. The Stalkers. Oh wait, that's an airplane. So I brought my trusty telescope out of retirement and patched it up myself to see if life does exist in space. Let's find out. NASA! Ah, Super Mario Galaxy, the game that answered one of life's greatest questions, do giant bees exist? I knew it. Regarded as one of the best games of all time by literally everybody, how on earth did I miss it? Oh yeah, I was playing the critically acclaimed sequel that exists, Nintendo. Like I said, I grew up as a Galaxy 2 guy. No story, just the levels, my bread and butter. So I've never actually experienced the original Mario Galaxy before. Sometimes I was able to play at a friend's house, until the game crashed, I never got past the first level. It wasn't until 3D All-Stars was announced, with Mario Galaxy included, was I finally able to play it. Sure, this collection was one of the laziest things Nintendo's ever done, but has sunshine and widescreen, I'm a sucker alright. And wow, Galaxy looks insanely good, even for a decade old game. The fact you can play it anywhere without motion controls makes this probably the definitive way to play Mario Galaxy. Legally. Until March 31st, okay Nintendo. But I've gone on for long enough, so strap yourselves in and aim for the stars. Let's begin Super Mario Galaxy. Galaxy opens with the Star Festival, an event held every 100 years when a special comet comes by and releases star bits. You know, the little crystals you collect throughout the game and abuse toads with. Also, they somehow taste like honey, and yes, I will put one in my mouth the first chance I get. But now that the festival is underway, nothing could possibly go wrong, yeah, that checks out. Bowser is back to kidnap Peach, I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it's definitely more dramatic this time around. I mean, Bowser summons lightning from his hands, I didn't know he could do that. NASA, you gotta believe me, Bowser's attacking Mushroom Kingdom right now! What do you mean Bowser's are real? He's the president of Nintendo of America, I was a stupid diehard Nintendo fanboy, you can't fool me. Bowser takes the entirety of Peach's castle into orbit, gotta give the man props, he put some effort into this. Although Mario is still alive after a botched attempt of a rescue, and wakes up on a small planet where we find our first extraterrestrial species, the Lumas. They remind me of Kirby, small stature, come in multiple colors, large appetite, the only difference is, they suck at hide and go seek. For goodness sake, I can find them from here. You get caught and you route your buddies, I hardly call these guys warriors. This is where we're introduced to Mario Galaxy's newest mechanic, gravity, Sir Isaac Newton would be proud. Yes, you can travel across or between planets. Pretty revolutionary if Sonic Adventure 2 didn't do it first, but just because Sonic Adventure 2 did it first doesn't mean it did it well. Here, the mechanic is way more refined and way more utilized than just one level mad space. It does take a while to get used to and can be a bit disorienting, I swear I've ran in circles more times than I can count, but it's such an interesting experience unique to this game and its sequel. Following that, we are introduced to their mother, Rosalina, a brand new character who is also a human? Okay, we're just gonna go along with this. And hey, at least she has some backstory. Completely optional backstory, but still there. She's a princess space goddess whose ship, the Comet Observatory, had its power source stolen by Bowser. Somehow. Oh yeah, because all the people there are freaking babies! Like, how do you even trust these guys in the kitchen? That thing will go up in flames in minutes! Ah, jeez. For that reason, she tasks you with collecting enough power stars to restore her ship and save your special one. And, in her ever divine power of the cosmos, she grants Mario the power of motion sickness. Okay. By either shaking the remote or tapping the Y button like any sane person, Mario can perform a spin attack on the ground or in the air that can also activate the ever so powerful launch star. It's quite the nice tool to have, since you can redirect yourself in midair if you made a mistake, or gain extra height if you're skilled enough. Though, the cooldown time does get on my nerves, you just gotta watch for that Luma to go back into Mario first. Like, just get back into Mario, just get back into Mario. With that out of the way, we are launched into the first level. This is Mario Galaxy. 
why am I going in a straight line? Just like the console it debuted on, the Wii, Mario Galaxy was designed to be played by everybody, no matter the skill level. So that's why, compared to every 3D Mario game before, Galaxy is linear. You're going one way and one way only, and that's not a bad thing. To make a case for linearity, since you are going on a straight line from start to finish, elements like progression and level design can be more meticulously planned because the developer knows exactly where you're going to go. It helps ease in new players with the game's mechanics, and Gateway Galaxy is a great example. It effortlessly goes into gameplay and teaches you the basics of the game. And not like you can get lost or anything. You're on a circle. Ending with the reward of a grand star. So satisfying. Although, Galaxy's not that hard, at least not until the very end, like the, the very, the very end. But the challenge given throughout, I think, is good enough to keep anybody interested. In conclusion, linearity isn't a bad thing. It's just different, and that's okay. Darn it, Mario is slow. Much slower than he was before. Like Mario, the princess has been captured for the billionth time, now on a cosmic scale, could you maybe do something more than a light jog? A little stroll, a bit more roll, okay? Not to mention, a lot of Mario's movement options are just gone. There's no dive, there's no kick, it's just really the long jump now. Though the levels were clearly more designed for this speed, so it's not a major issue. For now. And that concludes my criticisms towards the gameplay, because they did it. Mario Galaxy controls so well for what it's trying to do. Everything feels precise and exploding with creativity. It is a spectacle to watch, making the whole experience worth it. Oh, and I can't forget about the power-ups. Traditional power-ups make a return, and Galaxy introduces five new ones. Sure, returning power-ups like the Fire Flower have a timer now. I didn't know Nintendo likes to play Hot Potato, yet here we are. The new power-ups introduced more than make up for it. B Mario, someone at Nintendo had this on their resume. Seriously though, I went from ironically to unironically loving this power up. It's everything I could have asked for. It lets you fly for a bit, stick to honey, be Luigi. However, you can't long jump anymore and getting wet ruins all the fun. Boo Mario is an interesting one. Despite being allergic to any type of light, you can phase through walls and then you're turned into a boo. What's more to ask for? How about a fire flower counterpart in the ice flower, which allows Mario to skate on water and lava while creating ice platforms. I wish these things weren't temporary. What on earth did they do to him? Nintendo effectively turned Mario into the first human slinky and people hate this thing. Eventually I got used to it and I don't think it's as bad as people say it is, though it's still not great, so moving on. Finally, the red star. This is disappointing. On paper, the red star sounds awesome. A power-up that lets you fly without any skill? Sign me up. In practice, it only appears in one level and flying around planets isn't as cool for locked camera, so the only use it has is flying around the observatory. Come on! Overall, I like the new power-ups. Though the spring mushroom, red star, and fire flower leave a lot to be desired. And I completely forgot about the superstar. Now the galaxies you use them in? They're freaking fantastic! They are just... Gorgeous to look at, a true testament to how powerful the Wii really was. Variety is key here, and plays to the strengths of Mario Galaxy's linear design. Introducing a new idea, then expanding upon it throughout the level, and if you don't like one, it's over in less than 5 minutes, you can move on with your life. Personal favorites are Beach Ball Galaxy, just a feel good kind of stage, gets me in the right mood. Toy Time Galaxy is super appealing from a visual standpoint, Dreadnought Galaxy is super intimidating, and Melty Molten Galaxy is Melty Molten Galaxy, it's perfect. I'm not as attached to these as I am to other levels in Mario games like Rico Harbor or Bob on Battlefield, because I don't spend as much time in these levels since they're mostly one and done. but when they're done, they're done well. You'd think since Mario is in space, Nintendo would introduce new otherworldly species to the Mario universe, and you're right! I've never seen a penguin like this before. It looks like Nintendo's creative juices just dried out when it came to the NPCs. They just reused the penguin from Mario 64 and gave it a population boost. The robots are a cool idea, I like the designs, they're just not fleshed out enough to make me care about them. And sentient bees. Sure, a giant bee queen, Nintendo approved this. Okay, okay, how about this? Giant bees. Na NASA? NASA? Come on! Mario Galaxy is also the first game in the series to 
to use a full orchestra for its soundtrack. Now just because a game doesn't have orchestrated music in it, does not mean the soundtrack is bad. Heck, some of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time don't, but Mario Galaxy really shows the strength and effect it has on the game. 28 songs in total are orchestrated, and they are bliss. From the booming sounds of Good Egg Galaxy, Gusty Garden Galaxy, and the Bowser levels, to the more serene and melancholy Space Junk Galaxy, the orchestrated tracks makes these levels feel alive, giving them a sense of scope and grandeur, which is perfect for the theme of this game. But between those, we have the non-orchestrated music, Honey Hive Galaxy and Beach Bowl Galaxy, much more cheerful, traditional tracks compared to the others, and I love them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go say sorry to Delfino Plaza because the Comet Observatory track is really good. When you first hear it, it's simple. But as you get more and more of those grand stars, the track grows with more instruments, building to possibly my favorite hub world track in all of Mario. No matter how much nostalgia I have for Galaxy 2 and Sunshine. During development, Galaxy had much more cutesy music until the master Mario maestro, Koji Kondo, came in, slapped Yokota across the face and said, Mario isn't cute. Mario is cool. And that perfectly describes the soundtrack, because it's so cool. You know what, since I've got nothing better to do, I might as well complete Mario Galaxy 100%, aka, gather all 120 power stars, this should be fun. Of course, there are three hidden green stars to watch out for that unlock probably the hardest levels in the game. Yep, the hardest levels in the game, and they all have... Otherwise, I'll just have to travel back through every galaxy until I collect all of them. Wait, where are those? These are Prankster Comets, also known as the bane of my existence. They occasionally appear over galaxies and can be controlled by this Luma. To move them, you just gotta feed them 20 star bits. I feel like I'm being taxed for star bits here. There are five types of comets in total. Cosmic, Daredevil, Fast Foe, Speedy, and Purple Coins. We'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that. Cosmic creates an evil clone of Mario to race against. Daredevil is a one-way ticket to death's door if you dare hurt Mario. Fast Foe makes the levels and its enemies fast, and Speedy is just a speedrun of the level. Throughout my experience, Mario Galaxy has been quite good with presenting new obstacles and ways to play the game, making the task of getting 120 stars fun. Until we get to the purple coins. This was my breaking point. Every tiny issue I had with the gameplay, being the slow pace Mario runs at, is made even worse. The linear level design worked because there was one main goal that wasn't about collecting or wasting the player's time to explore the levels in a game that wasn't really about sandbox exploration. These comets takes those levels and makes you grab 100 purple coins. At best, these are nice little time trials that don't waste your time. At their worst, I have never been so bored in a Mario game. If this was Sunshine, it probably would've been fine since movement in that game is fast, slick, and fun. Galaxy takes that word and throws it into the sun. Beach Ball, Freeze, Flame, Honey Hive, and Dusty Dune Galaxy just weren't designed with this idea in mind. And if you die, so help you, you'll have to start all over again. The only thing you get for gathering all 120 power stars is a slightly different ending that tells us what happened to Rosalina. They just head back into space, whoop de doo Oh wait, uh, Luma was left behind, a oh, poor guy. In fact, I haven't talked about Rosalina's backstory at all since it's... Might as well find out what happened. The heck was that? So Rosalina and a lost Luma went into space to find its mother. But wait, that Luma looks like the exact same one that was left behind. Does that mean everything loops in on itself? Is Rosalina from the future? Is that Comet Observatory a time machine? Koizumi, what have you done? <sighs> I don't think I'm ready for more story elements in mainline Mario. Where was I? Oh yeah, 120 power stars. The only thing you get is a slightly different ending and... Luigi? Luigi. Never mind, this has all been worth it! This is the greatest day of my life! And if you collect 120 stars again with Luigi, you can access the Star Festival area of the game. That is not worth it. Thankfully, only 60 stars are necessary to restore the Comet Observatory to full power. And with that, to the center of the universe we go. Full power and engage. It's weird, I'm feeling pumped in the most ambitious way possible in the Mario game. Time to take down Bowser. The final level, Bowser's Galaxy Reactor. The sense of grandeur is off the charts as you make your way to the final boss. With unique puzzles using gravity beams and more platforming challenges, 
Bowser is no pushover, especially in the final fight. Bar none, my favorite Bowser fight so far, taking the previous and expanding upon them, all contained in the heart of a burning star. You know what they say, all's well that ends well, as Bowser is defeated and his empire crumbles before him. Mario and Peach are flying across space, back to the Comet Observatory, and there's a black hole. A big one. Dang it! Holy NASA, listen to me! I'll never get to see Metroid Prime 4 come out. Wait, all the Lumas are sacrificing themselves to save everybody? What is this? Emotion? Finally, Rosalina appears before Mario, strangely bigger and gives one final speech. The cycle repeats itself, but not quite the same. Then Mario wakes up in a brand new galaxy formed by all the past ones before and yells at the top of his lungs, Welcome! Welcome new galaxy! Weird. Apparently something's supposed to be different, but everything's the same. Wait, Mario Galaxy 2 doesn't exist anymore. Rats. Completing Mario Galaxy has been a once-in-a-lifetime experience, I may never do it again. However, I don't regret it. Experiencing this for the first time, especially with the second to compare it to, has been wonderful. Even though it's not as revolutionary as Mario 64, or as fun as Sunshine, Galaxy pushes the boundary of what a Mario game could be in both story and scope. In a better choice of words, the only way I can describe Mario Galaxy is epic in every way. It surprised me more times than I can count, and those low points never last longer than a few minutes. Although it's not my favorite and was a game I never experienced as a kid, Super Mario Galaxy is one of the best games on the Wii, if not one of the best Nintendo's ever made, and it wears that title like a badge of honor. So after experiencing quite the space odyssey, I decided to give up on my true calling, which turned out to just be my alarm clock. Mostly because my telescope broke due to some unknown reasons, and NASA won't return my calls. So, I decided to become a time traveler. See ya in the 90s.